I'm not going there, Daddy. I'm going to find out if I'm really alive. What's going on, guys? JJ Wilson is here. This will be episode 44 for the JJ Starwinds Corner. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Anyways, I want to get this story out the way first. Um, this happened on Friday, a couple of days ago, I believe. What, what day was that? The 25th? Because today is the 29th. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's the 25th. Anyway, um, this this was bad, man. Like. This happened in Orlando, Florida. This is a city that I go to pretty frequently over the past few years now. And I remember going to Icon Park, which is an international boulevard. It's like a major tourist street in the city. And I remember them constructing vehicle coming. I remember there was a construction of a large slingshot ride. And they call it... I forget the name of it. It's called the Orlando something. But anyway, they made this ride and it is brand new. And it was like supposed to be the tallest freestanding drop tower in the world. It's like over 430 feet tall. But anyway, there was a sad incident that happened. Uh, this young man by the name of Trey Sampson, who was only 14 years old. He was a teenager. He was down there for spring break, obviously, because... Um, you know, it's around this time of year, March, April. Many children in the United States are off for spring break. So what happened here? Uh, Trey Sampson got on this ride, this brand new ride. And apparently he was able to get in the ride and they thought he was secure. And there's actually video cameras of the people asking, was he secure? Was he secure? Are you sure? And said, yeah, the light didn't turn red. So I guess that's like a safety mechanism to where if... A person is not secure on the ride, it has to glow a certain color. So in that case, it's red. And if it's green, obviously, they're good to go. And I guess they didn't hear anything, and they assumed the guy was secure. Now, the thing about Trey Sampson was this young man, he wasn't your average teenager. The dude was over 6 feet, 5 inches tall, weighing about 340 pounds. So this was a big kid, like. He's actually big like a college football player playing defensive end or offensive lineman or something like that. He's that big already. That's insane. I don't know what his parents are feeding him, but wow. So for a guy that size to get inside a ride like that, you have to wonder, like, how was he able to get in the first place? But yeah, unfortunately, by the time the ride started to fall, I think that's when the, the young man fell off and he fell hundreds of feet to his death. And it was crazy what the people were describing in that story. I, I couldn't believe it. I was like, wow. So yeah, condolences to his family big time. Because that's something that definitely did not need to happen. I don't get on those kind of rides anyway. The the, the drop tower stuff, man. Yeah, I don't touch those rides. Because I don't trust them like that. And apparently, that ride is not you know, big enough for a, a boy or even a man that size to just be fully secure you know it's, it's, he was just too big to get on there it sounds like you know and that's unfortunate right so now there's questions of whether or not that free ride is going to open back up again and i'm sure city council of orlando is debating on what to do next and what safety measures need to be done in order for something like that to not happen again so again condolences go out to trey samson i'm sure they've been hearing it all week it's it shouldn't have happened, but it did happen. And it's a, it's a crazy, crazy way to die. It just is. Now, let me go to the other topic. Uh, I found a very interesting article on here regarding student loans. So this is from Yahoo.com. I don't know if there's anybody that has student loan debt. I have some student loan debt myself. Uh, I thought this was a very interesting read. And this is from Yahoo.com via Fortune. 
the title, as you can see, it says only 18% of all federal borrowers have paid their student loans during the pause. Ugh, sorry. That could make things complicated when payments restart. Right? And yeah, for those that don't know, since March 2020, since the beginning of the COVID pandemic, we've had a freeze payment from the Department of Education when it comes to these student loan debts. So which means that, you know, they pause the payments and the interest rates, right, of said payments. And a borrower doesn't have to worry about paying it month by month anymore. He can just pretty much, he or she can pretty much focus on different things. Basically, you know, like rent, uh, bills, credit card debt, anything like that, right? So you didn't have to worry necessarily about paying off the student loan each month uh, during the COVID pandemic. So now that it's become... A bit down like the the fear is kind of gone with the COVID a little bit maybe not a little bit but by a lot even though it's still here um, now the United States is like okay well we're gonna start gradually letting these kids pay their debt back again and it was gonna happen in May 2022 that's when it was supposed to happen unfortunately as we can see from the stats that hasn't really pan out like that a lot of people have just not been able to pay up right now I can brag because I'm one of the few that just kept right on paying. I didn't I didn't stop. I never stopped. So just looking along the article, just let me browse here for a minute. Okay, so here's a good here's a good tidbit here. While most federal student loans remain under the payment freeze through May 1st, 2022, emergency forbearance programs for other borrowers mostly lapsed by the end of 2020. Specifically, about 10% of the FFEL borrowers and 7% of private borrowers entered forbearance during the pandemic period. But those programs lapsed by the end of 2020. The outcome for those without a payment freeze varied. The New York Feds found that, on average, those with private loans actually increased their rate of pay down during the pandemic. But researchers note that private student loan borrowers also tend to have historically lower delinquency rates and higher credit scores. So yeah, I read that too in the article that some people managed to get their credit score back up. Instead of going down, if they just continued paying the loans, even with the freeze. So I read that as well. So I just thought that was something interesting. So most experts expect that restarting student loan payments will be chaotic, especially because it's been more than two years since the vast majority of Americans have made any payments. Some borrowers, for example, haven't ever made any payments on their student loan because they graduated during the pandemic. Those are recent graduates. Meanwhile, millions of borrowers had their loan server changed during the pandemic, meaning at minimum, they need to update their contact information and repayment terms. So you got that problem, too. And I think later in the article, it says um, that some providers had changed, like uh, Sally Mae, for example. They pretty much stopped their services and they took all those payments, all the bars from Sally Mae to what's called Aid Advantage. They took those people from there to this program because it was it was some shady stuff going on with Sally Mae. So they had to end that off and they started this new one. And even under the new loan provider, there have been some conflicts with the borrowers and stuff. Now, me personally, I haven't had that issue. It's been a pretty smooth ride so far and I hope it stays that way. Right. So, I mean, I managed to pay off a, a crap ton of loans already and I'm only down to like a few left. So that's awesome. But yeah, I just thought I'd throw that out there. For those that might want to see the article, I'll try to put it in the description box. So yeah, that's going to be it from here. I hope you all enjoyed that little tidbit. Uh, feel free to comment on what you think about the student loan situation. Should, that, should Congress and the United States go ahead and continue to you know, extend the, the moratorium on the, on the freeze of the loans? Or should they just go ahead and bring the interest rates back so people can start paying on a regular basis again, even though many, many people have yet to pay? So, yeah, that would be my big question for you guys, if you understand. Anyway, that's it from here. I will see you all later.